Hello and welcome to another episode of my ZAT microcomputer series. You can see I'm appearing on camera now, so place your comments below if you like me to appear on camera more or do the video in the old way. So, yeah, back to the, today's topic. There has been a few updates on the motherboard of this ZAT computer and let's take a closer look. First, if you look close enough, you can see these three chips up here. Well, actually chip sockets, but there will be new chips placed here. And these two were actually in the original plan, but was not, but the sockets was not placed uh, until the, after the filming of last video. So these two chips will be a shift register and a binary counter. And they together form a very simple interrupt based, like interrupt driven PS2 keyboard interface that allow me to use this computer with a PS2 keyboard. But this chip here or the, the chip will, that will be in this place is a new chip. It's an Texas Instruments SN76489 sound generator chip. It, it has nothing special. It's not like actually a new chip because it's been around for like 40 years or even maybe 50 years. I, I don't think it's 50 years old, but it's at least 40 years old. Maybe 45. But that doesn't matter. What matters is like this chip was not in the original plan because the original plan was like this computer being absolutely silent or it's like the sound would be generated by like toggling a bit like of the IO pins and that's it and driving like a beeper but now I plan to make this computer much more powerful than it was and that's one of the benefits of building on these prototype boards you can change the plan you can change the schematic you can change the design on the fly you can make it like beefier you can make it like skinnier you can upgrade it you can downgrade it if you find your targets targets not achievable And I've actually like did a lot of soldering like recently I've been working like eight hours a day mostly in order to get this part of the circuit done I think this part which is the video RAM has been the most complicated solder job I've ever done because that involves soldering pins that are next to each other without like bending the wire so much that it breaks or shorting two pins together and that is hugely difficult and the interesting thing is after I finished the soldering or almost finished the soldering I learned about one chip called the TMS9118 which is almost exactly the same as this 9918 chip but it operates with just two DRAM chips but I've learned that information too late and the, the RAM banks has been the RAM bank has been soldered so yeah anyway and uh, this part of the board is actually finished is where the magic happens actually what gives the, this computer its new, unique features and its unique capabilities but I've been like desoldering some wires and adding more wires to make this computer even more powerful and to enhance its emulation like features and it doesn't mean that I'm making this computer easier to emulate on a modern computer. This computer 
is not an emulator. It it is an emulator, so to speak. So it can actually emulate several microcomputers that is based on the Z80 and the, the TMS 991A chip, or should I say Z80 because it's a it's it's a made in America. So anyway, Z80 and the, the TMS 991A chip, such as the Sega S3 SG. 3000, not 3000, 1000, the MSX, the Spectral Video 328, 728, but that's basically MSX. Basically, all of them. If it's based on a Z80 and a TMS chip, it can run programs that run on those systems. And that's the purpose of this sound chip. I'm actually adding a feature that a program can use this sound chip to emulate the sound output of the AY sound chip of the MSX. And I think I can do it, although this has never been done before, I believe. So, yeah. There has been a few changes to the motherboard, and that's the summary. And there's one more thing which is this chip, or would be this chip here. This is actually a uh, Intel 8251 synchronous, asynchronous like transceiver. And the reason why I'm adding all those chips is actually changing like the ma majority of interfacing method, like the major interfacing method. This computer was planned to use a serial interface and basically it is used as a something like a, a serial based single, single board computer and it didn't have this like video circuit and didn't have the audio, it didn't even have the keyboard interface. But then I, I added the video and the keyboard so that it can also function as a standalone computer. But for testing, I'm I was going to use like the serial interface. Now I've added the sound chip, so this thing is really a standalone computer. And the first testing code I think should be run on this part. But the serial interface still serves a very important purpose. Serve a very important purpose. That is to transfer files, transfer files between this computer and my laptop and my PC. So here's the plan. I'm not a big fan of plugging in and unplugging EEPROMs because that might just damage the socket and make it like loose so it doesn't make good contact and if this socket or any of these sockets doesn't make good contact this this board is done this board is basically done so what I intend to do is that I'm adding a feature that so that this computer can Flash in its own firmware using this serial link, and it can also it can also load ROM images for those different systems. So now here's the plan for this. And in order to do that, in order to add these features, I'm ad actually adding the wires here so that it would take me much longer than I anticipated to finish this board because I mean as I said the best way to do prototype board soldering is that you work from one way to an uh, one side to another and if you want to solder add a wire to a place where you have been doing a lot of work or a lot of work have done or even worse a lot of wires have covered that place 
you need to painstakingly desolder those wires, basically undo your work, add those wires, and then redo your work. So, that's why this board is taking much longer than I anticipated. But the good news is, there's another change of plan. That ZAD secret video which basically explains why this board is so powerful is becoming not not is becoming is coming next. Basically, is this the next video or the video after next? I make this promise here. I'm not waiting until this board is finished because it is not taking forever, but it's going to take a very long time. And I don't want to lose any subscribers. I just got my first comment and my second comment and my like the first Z80 video has got more than 10 views which really surprises me. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's my response. Z80 video coming up.